the movie opens in a charming grocery store, where three men casually stroll in and begin grabbing various items without any intention of paying. The shopkeeper politely asks for payment, but one of the men pulls out a knife, demanding money from the store safe. At that moment a young woman entered the store, intending to purchase a better choice pancake mix. When the thugs spotted her carrying a significant amount of cash, they menacingly confronted her with a knife as well. Fearlessly, she disarms the robber and swiftly subdues all three men, leaving them unconscious. After her heroic act, she pays for a can of pineapple they accidentally damaged before calmly leaving the store. In the following scene, amidst an elegant ballet performance, one of the dancers displays clear signs of unease. Her anxiety doesn't stem from the dance routine itself, but rather from a man in the audience who continues to gaze at her attentively. Meanwhile, the young woman from the grocery store, Jian Zhang Seo, drifted through a despondent life, feeling profoundly disconnected from the world. One day, as she lay in slumber, her phone's ring cut through the silence, jolting her awake. The voice on the other end belonged to an old friend, Min He, desperately imploring her to come over. Jian takes a ride on her motorcycle to visit her friend, bringing along a bottle of alcohol as a comforting gesture. As she arrives at Min He's home, a haunting silence permeates the air. Despite her repeated doorbell rings, there's no response. Fueled by her deepening concern, Jian enters a locked code, granting her access to the room. In the cozy room she frantically searches for her friend, her heart racing with worry. Suddenly, her eyes are captivated by a touching scene, a delicate box carefully tied with a vibrant red ribbon. When she opened the box, inside were a lovely pair of ballet shoes. Near these shoes lies a heartfelt note that reads, Please get revenge for me, I thought you'd be able to help. Beneath the message is the Instagram name of a man called Chef Choi. Jian, resolute, continues her quest to find Min He, but her determination is shattered when she stumbles upon the lifeless body of her friend in the bathtub, sending shockwaves of grief through her. In a moment of reflection, she recalls a time from the past when she first encountered Min He at the bake shop. It was a period in her life when everything seemed utterly meaningless. Approaching her with a warm smile, Min He reintroduced herself as a former high school classmate. With genuine kindness, she extended an invitation for coffee, reaching out to bridge the gap of time and circumstance. In those days, Jian found herself working as a security guard for influential figures. Min He, however, emerged as more than just a friend. She became her trusted companion, infusing vibrant hues back into her world. Through Min He, she discovered that life held value, that it was worth embracing, and that it could even be joyful alongside her newfound ally. Now, in the present day, she delves into an online quest to track down Chef Choi. After a quick search on the internet, she stumbles upon his Instagram shop. Hoping to maintain her undercover identity, she feigns interest by placing an order for a box of sushi. However, to her surprise, Chef Choi abruptly exits the chat. Determined to unravel the breadcrumbs left for her, she receives an incoming call on Min He's phone, which she had previously taken from her room. As she picks up, a man on the other end starts hurling insults, mistakenly assuming he's speaking to Min He. He demands her presence at a meeting later, warning that if Min He fails to appear, he'll take actions to damage her relationships with the people she holds dear. In that conversation, he provides Jian with the details where to meet in the following night. Meanwhile, Jian arrives at the meeting place and discreetly observes a man who arrives at the supposed spot and tails him on her motorcycle when he departs. Upon discovering his hidden residence, she patiently waits until he leaves before sneaking into his opulent mansion. Inside, her eyes fall upon a collection of USB drives, each labeled with women's names. Overcome with curiosity, she inspects the contents and is appalled to find explicit and compromising material, 
a malicious form of blackmail targeting numerous women, including her closest friend, Minhee. Jian's anger and determination surge as she grapples with the distressing discovery. Meanwhile, Choi persists in calling Min Hee's fault, but this time, Jian meticulously records every word, eager to gather more clues and evidence against him. Armed with evidence from a listening device she planted in his room, Jian infiltrates the club Choi had mentioned, seamlessly blending in with the crowd. Luck favors her as she crosses paths with Choi. With remarkable finesse, she lures him into joining her for a drink, capitalizing on the opportunity presented. Swift and composed, she agrees to accompany him to a hotel room. In this pivotal moment, her determination and wit become her greatest allies, guiding her towards justice and retribution. Once inside, Choi offers her a drink, unaware of the storm brewing within Jian. When he believes Jian to be unconscious, he indulges his sinister desires, donning a mask and capturing his cruel acts on film. In a moment of quiet determination, Jian discreetly draws her knife and strikes, catching him off guard. Despite Choi's own combat prowess, he valiantly fights back. However, Jian's resolve proves unyielding. With unmatched determination and skill, she finally overwhelms him, leaving him with a disfigured face as a testament to his heinous actions. Amidst the chaos, Jian manages to escape Choi's henchmen after they hear the commotion in the room. On her way out, she encounters another captive woman, saving her from the clutches of danger. Together, they make a swift escape, racing away in Choi's own Lamborghini, leaving behind a trail of justice and retribution. In the days that followed, Choi received an unwelcome visit from his boss while still in recovery. The boss issued a chilling directive. He ordered Choi to handle Jian personally. Their mission, to capture Jian alive and deliver her directly to him. Meanwhile, in a different location, Jian brought the woman to a diner, seeking answers about Choi's operation. The woman revealed harrowing details, they were treated horribly, like slaves enduring non-stop suffering, always afraid that their embarrassing videos might be shown to everyone. These videos were taken without their consent, exploiting their heavily intoxicated state induced by the drinks they were given. For a long time, they had prayed for a savior, someone to liberate them from Choi's vicious grip. She believed that Jian was the one who would ultimately rescue them from the clutches of Choi's cruelty. Later on, Choi sought the assistance of his friend Myung Shik to capture Jian, enticing him with promises of payment for his cooperation. The very next day, Jian paid a visit to her former employer, seeking specialized equipment. She explained the nature of her endeavor, stressing her urgent need for substantial firepower. Her former boss directed her to an elderly couple, and they arranged a meeting in an open field. Following the exchange of a bag of cash, the elderly man initially displayed a collection of outdated weaponry, which left Jian somewhat disappointed. Curious about her requirements, the elderly woman inquired why Jian needed these firearms. In response, Jian revealed the gravity of her situation, prompting the woman to unveil a hidden cache of superior weapons, including an imposing flamethrower, better suited to Jian's pressing needs. At a car wash, Mayan Shik approached their contact in the police force, requesting assistance in tracing the location of Choi's Lamborghini. Back at Jian's house, she discussed her plan with the woman who had once been enslaved, emphasizing the need for caution. In a moment of reflection, Jian remembered her last birthday celebration with her dear friend. During that precious time, Min He's mere presence had a magical way of lifting Jian's spirits. With heartfelt sincerity, Min He had sung her a beautiful birthday song and sharing her dreams of becoming a professional ballerina. She had even expressed her aspirations to study ballet in Russia, painting a vivid picture of her future. This cherished memory of their friendship became a driving force, propelling her forward in her unwavering quest for justice, honoring the spirit of her dear friend. Returning home from the store where Jian had gone to buy some food, she found herself ambushed by Choi's men who attacked her in-house, unexpectedly, 
Faced with no other option, Jian had to flee, leaving the woman she had previously saved to be captured once again. Later, when Choi met his boss, he lied about having taken care of Jian to avoid his boss's punishment. In a desperate attempt to extract information, Choi relentlessly questioned the captive woman, resorting to violence. However, the woman remained silent, displaying incredible bravery even in the face of pain. Jian had managed to follow them the previous night, discovering the location of their operations. She embarked on a mission to eliminate the guards one by one, methodically taking them down and strategically neutralizing the man who controlled the security cameras. Amidst the chaos, memories flooded back of the last time she saw Min He alive, a bittersweet moment marked by the gift of a pair of shoes, which she now wearing as a reminder of her dear friend. Upon entering the premises, Jian discovered the bloodied clothes of the recaptured woman, intensifying her determination. Undeterred, she pressed on, making her way towards the main house, her steps fueled by a fierce resolve for justice. Entering the elevator with three men inside, she acted swiftly, eliminating them without uttering a word. Upon reaching the underground plant, she boldly announced her presence and demanded information about the girl's whereabouts. The big boss emerged, attempting to convince Jian that he was not her enemy. He offered her a chance to live if she joined them. However, Jian's patience were thin, and without hesitation, she shot him in the head. Undeterred, she pressed on, demanding the location of the captured girl. But just as her weapon ran out of bullets, the boss's right-hand man pulled a knife, and everyone launched an attack on her, escalating the tension to a perilous level. Jian swiftly retrieved her concealed weapon unleashing a hail of gunfire that took down her assailants one by one. In a relentless onslaught, she eliminated a significant number of them, leaving only one survivor for interrogation. With fierce determination, she subjected the lone survivor to a grueling line of questioning, determined to uncover the truth. Her relentless pursuit of justice was evident as she forced broken glass into his mouth and delivered a series of punishing punches. Outside, Mayan Shik arrived, carrying the unconscious body of the captured woman. Seeing his arrival, Jian pointed her weapon at the man, ready to protect the life she had fought so hard to save. Just as Jian was about to finish him off, Choi shot her from behind, hitting her in the shoulder. Thinking the job was complete, Mayan Shik informed Choi that he would take care of the cleanup. However, in a shocking twist, Choi double-crossed him and shot Mayan Shik as well. As Choi approached Jian, she managed to hide behind a cart while the captured woman woke up and shot him. Jian then placed him in the trunk of a car and drove him to a desolate beach. When Choi regained consciousness, he pleaded with Jian to stop what she was doing and spare his life, begging for mercy in a last-ditch effort to survive. Jian's voice cut through the tension, telling him he had no clue how powerful women could be in destroying his operations. He had always considered them easy prey. Choi, defiant, reported that he didn't recognize her, and claimed he hadn't done anything to deserve her focus. With a firm gaze, Jian mentioned Minhee, the ballerina whose life he had shattered. Choi's laughter echoed, cruelly underscoring the truth that all this vengeance arose from the harm inflicted upon just one ballerina. His callous response only fueled Jian's determination intensifying her anger against him. With steely determination, she unleashed a torrent of fire from her flamethrower, engulfing Choi and reducing him to ashes, putting an end to his sinister existence. In the aftermath, Jian meticulously gathered all the USB drives from Choi's house, along with a chilling list of women captured by several other men. Driven by determination, she jumped on her motorcycle and embarked on a mission to rescue those women, dedicating her life to this noble purpose. I hope you enjoyed the movie recap of Ballerina. If you found it entertaining, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more content.